It's a Sabbath. And that says a lot. The company has been around for as long as I make these videos, and I believe everyone knows what their strengths are already. It's the great build quality, the complete feature set, the rarely seen button controls that includes volume control, and also a good reach to regional markets for a better warranty support, at least here in Southeast Asia. And this E16 is better than ever, especially the sound quality, as we'll talk about it in a minute. But unfortunately, one thing stays the same. You can still hear the electronics inside making noise just like any other Sabbath. And I won't lie, the presence of electronic noise and hissing like this in a $70 earbuds is unacceptable. But to my ears, it's not so bad and Sabbath has done so many things right here. So you know what? I still love the E16 despite so. And I think you will too. So not taking any more of your time, let's get started right now. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my review of the Sabbath E16. As always, full disclosure is down in the description below. There will be affiliate links as well, which you can use to help me support the channel. Just click through it and buy any stuff you want. I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thank you. Also, what I want you to know is I always give you my own honest opinion in all my reviews. So yeah, I recommend you hit the thumbs up and subscribe because we're getting straight to the point here and talk about that electronic noise issue along with the sound quality. So one question, is it annoying? My answer is mostly no. It's the kind that you can easily ignore when you play any media, even in quiet passages of songs, and especially in daytime like this, that slight background hiss will just blend in into the noise around, and even in this relatively quiet room, it's fine, I cannot hear it. Then what about nighttime views? So I've been watching, you know, stuff at around 20 to 30% volume. I've been using this for weeks and I never really find myself complaining over the slight hiss too. Again, it's really not noticeable until you press on pause. But you have to know that hissing is only one thing because there's another noise on top of it that's most noticeable when you're about to play or pause a song. It's like a clicking sound similar to what you'll hear when something is wirelessly charging. And that's not everything. The worst part in my opinion is when a media is playing and you put the volume all the way down, the earbuds are not silent. You still get kind of a radio noise, a distorted sound of what is playing, leaking out, a little bit, just a tiny bit. And it drives me crazy because it's supposed to be completely silent. But again, it's really subtle. Nothing crazy like the KZ SA08 that hisses so loud, it annoys the heck out of me. You can hear that even when a song is playing. And I know these are not supposed to be here in the first place. So I totally understand if you completely skip the E16 because of this issue. But if you can't accept it, I think the sound quality, among other good things it has, is gonna be worth your while. With that said, how does it sound then? So, the Sabbath E16 has a treble focus sound. It's got an upper mid lift that makes vocals, especially females, sound very clear. It's practically the star of a show. The treble end is boosted to give an airy feel too, so it never feels cramped even when a lot of instruments are playing and the bass is tuned on the natural side. So it's just enough to complete a song, but still very detailed nonetheless. Now, I usually don't talk much about driver setups, but this is the first ever True Wireless earbuds to use a balanced membrane driver, or BM for short. There's one dynamic driver as usual, which acts as a woofer, but now it's stacked with a BM tweeter, which is like a BA driver. You know, it specializes on a certain frequency range, but now there's nothing touching the sound membrane and it drives the sound directly towards your ear canal. The idea here is to create a cleaner and crisper sound, which I can say is legit. Later, you'll see me compare this to my favorite treble focused earbuds and I can hear more micro details with the Sabbath E16. It's more resolving, it's clearer, and it doesn't have the limited soundstage bottleneck, which is common seen in multiple BA driver setups. Although, you know, it has nothing to do with BA, it's a BM, but it's a similar tech, you get the idea. 
Coming back to the sound signature, it's basically the complete opposite of the similarly priced Soundbeats H1. So if you want bass, then this is not it. This is for those who like clear vocals and trebles, if I haven't repeated that enough. But talking separation and sound staging, they're practically on par, which is kind of the best in the Truas earbuds under $100 at this moment. And so for the comparison today, I wanna go with the orchestra version of Orange from 7 Oops. This is a live band pop song with a lot of strings mixed in and the Sabbath E16 plays this beautifully. It is so, so good. Vocal, as I've said, is the star of the show especially female that resides in that upper mid region, it's even clearer than the Moondrop Sparks or the Field T1 Pro, which has been my longtime favorite. Without ever sounding sibilant, the strings are prominent, the cymbal and hi-hats are bright without being too piercing, and the bass is not a slouch either. Every note is clear and distinct, and it's really a love letter for those who love upper end details. This level of clarity reminds me of the Edifier TWS1 Pro, which just recently took the brightest sounding place in my recommendation. Trust me, the TWS1 Pro sounds amazing, but I think the Sabbath E16 is a step up to that with its more balanced tuning as the main reason. I like the more natural sounding bass playing a complementary role here, giving more space to the instruments, and also it places the vocal a bit more naturally, which is a bit too loud on the edifier, it's almost shouty, and the overall balance is just better on the Sabbath E16. Now talking about other genres before we wrap up the sound quality part, the bass is light in comparison to even the edifier TWS1 Pro, or Moondrop Sparks, but it's still no slouch when the time calls for it. I personally won't ever complain listening to hip hop rap like Growing Up by Macklemore here, and in terms of sub bass reach, in The Weekend by SZA, finally I got her name right, the Sabbath E16 hits every sub bass note with a decent amount of rumble. And that's what I call a generational leap when compared to the previous Sabbaths. I have the G12 Elite here, which sounds about the same as the E12 Ultra, and immediately I notice the sound stage is wider, the vocals is placed clearly in the front, it's always there with instruments around it, and the separation is clear, the treble detail and clarity is improved significantly. Yes, the electronic noise issue is still the same, but it's really not a big deal once you actually listen to something. Okay, that was quite a long one, but I hope you appreciate my approach and I really think sound quality is the most important part in any earbuds. But yeah, let's move on now to what's inside the box. So as your usual Sabbath product, inside the box you get a carrying pouch, three pairs of extra silicone tips, along with three pairs of foam tips, which all look quite tall. So this means if you want to use aftermarket ear tips, you don't have to buy the ones designed specifically for true wireless earbuds. The case could take normal ones like the SpinFit CP100 you see here without any issue. And also to the build quality now, it's a glossy finish on top of a sprinkled glitter look. You can pick between black, blue, red, and green, and they're all in a darker tone which I think looks pretty nice. But most importantly, I've had this for weeks and I don't see any scratches yet, but that's because I do keep it in a pouch. Also, as far as features goes, it's got all the basics covered. There's a color-coded battery indicator when you open the case there in the center. It charges via USB-C or wirelessly. It's got a 400 mAh battery, which for the size is pretty small, but it gets you through the week just fine. And finally, the hinge stays open when tilted. The earbuds has the same quality too, only now it has a hyper sculpted custom IEM like shape that fills each and every ridges in your ear conca and that actually helps with the physical button, we'll talk about it in a second. But for now, the fit is great, it goes pretty deep just like any previous Sabbat. You can take this for exercises just fine, it's stable, it's IPX5 water resistant, but what you have to know is the built-in silicone tips are not the most noise isolating ones. Now at this point of the script, I notice another electronic noise action happening and that's when the earbuds are charging in the case. Check this out. I don't know why, but it seems like a general issue for Sabbath. 
their circuitry is quite noisy. But this caught my attention only weeks later when I charged with the case open. And I believe we all charge with our cases closed, right? So it shouldn't be a deal breaker, but it's something worth noting nonetheless. And I agree, again, this should not be there in a $70 earbuds. Okay, moving on to the controls now, as you can see here, it's the same as any other Sabbath releases in the past, which means I'm not a huge fan of the volume control put on triple tap, but it's there at the very least, so controls are complete. And right now you can see the Sabbath logo actually lights up. It's quite a bright one, which lights up the room when you use it in a completely dark room, but it only flashes when you take the earbuds out and it's looking for a device to pair. Otherwise, once it's paired, it won't light up anymore, so don't worry about that. Okay for this physical button. I just wanna take a second here and say that I appreciate Sabbath for sticking with it. I still think it's the most reliable control method, the pressure needed is not too much, and with the custom IEM design here, you're actually pressing onto your skull instead of jamming it into the ear canal. So great job Sabbath, controlling music here is a breeze. Finally, let's talk about connectivity. The Sabbath uses the latest QCC3040 chip, which means it has great dual mode connectivity. You can switch between one or two earbuds seamlessly. The gaming mode is good. The battery life is more than enough. In my testing, this lasted for more than nine hours until it's down to 10%. So this could do 10 just fine. And it goes loud as well. So if you're gonna be listening for a longer session, I think you'll most likely put it around 30 to 40 and get better battery out of it. But keep in mind that I'm using my iPhone here so this is an AAC result and if you use Aptex codec the battery will decrease by another 20% and speaking of which this is another one of those earbuds that does not support Aptex adaptive despite having the QCC3040 chip but either way this will sound amazing the driver and tuning will be the most important aspect in getting good sound and so far the connection has been solid too with that said let's check out the latency test and a call test right now All right, so welcome to the microphone test, everyone. And right now, this is an indoor setting where nothing is going on. There's no fan, no noise, no whatever. The room is practically silent, and this is the best sound that you will get from the Sabbath E16. And one thing that I want to notice is, again, with the noisy circuitry, you can hear that, uh, that how do you call it? Like the wireless charging noise, the background hissing a little bit more. So it's like, I also don't recommend this as something that you will want to use if you do a lot of meetings and a lot of phone calls. So yeah, you just have to keep that in mind 
What do you think of the sound quality? Let's just bring this outside and we'll see how the sound isolation goes. All right, so now we are on the tab at E16. And what do you think of the sound quality? As usual, there's like a lot of cars and motorcycles going past behind me right here. And there's also a little bit of wind coming by. So uh, you can see how the noise cancellation works. Here. All right, so that's pretty much it for the microphone quality of the E16. Let's compare this a little bit to the best part of the test, the AirPods Pro. All right, so here we are with the AirPods Pro. What do you think of the sound quality? Is the background noise cancelled more? Uh, you can hear my voice a little bit there now. Let me know down in the comments below. Again, this is just as a comparison because I compare everything with the AirPods Pro. Uh, I'm not mentioning about the price or anything. So yeah, just as a comparison so you have a good baseline. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the mag chest. Let's go back upstairs and we'll finish the video. All right, looking at the Sabbath E16 as a whole, the sound quality is really one of a kind. Perhaps thanks to that balanced membrane driver, it has clarity unlike anything else you get under 70 or under 100 bucks. It's the clearest sound I have yet to hear in a true wireless earbuds. That alone should be a reason enough to get this Sabbath E16, but you have to deal with the noisy electronics that frankly, should not exist in this price. So my message to Sabbat would be, prioritize this issue, fix it in your next release, but otherwise you're doing a great job. And for you, my beloved viewers, let me tell you, I personally don't mind it. The worst part for me is when I need to reduce the volume all the way down and I'm still making noise, that's kind of annoying, but I still think the pros outweigh the cons in this case, provided that you can get this below 70 bucks. But let me know what do you think. Don't hesitate to leave your questions down below. I'm available on Instagram and Twitter as well. I'll try to reply as much as I can and that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I'm Kenneth and I'll see you in the next one.